Lord, God bless you today. We are grateful to be in the house of the Lord one more time. And I'm grateful that you're with us one more time. It is a privilege, it is an honor, and it's just a glorious thing that God has allowed us to receive his word. And so this morning, uh, we come before his presence with thanksgiving and his courts with praise, and we exalt his name and exalt his word. I'm Pastor Harshley. You're with us here at Grace New Covenant Church, and you're on time for the uh, Christian uh, adult Christian education uh, lesson for this morning. And it's a blessing. It's a wonderful lesson. And I think it's going to help all of us uh, walk more perfectly in the will of the Lord. We're going to begin with prayer and then get right to what the scripture has for us today. So, Father, we honor you in this house and we thank you, Lord, today in a very full way for your word. I pray that you would speak to every individual, each of us listening, and that you would use me, word of my mouth, Lord, that all would be in accordance with your will. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name, and we say amen and amen. God bless you. Turn with me in your lesson, if you have your quarterlies, to Lesson 3.1, February 6, 2022. Uh, here we are already in the month of February. It seemed like we just turned into uh, 2022 and we're already in, in February. Uh, lesson 3.1, and the lesson is entitled, Propelled into Purpose. Uh, we are in the last section of the uh, winter quarter uh, lessons, and uh, the, the quarters are divided into series. This last series of four lessons uh, and it, entitled Following Jesus. And so these next four lessons throughout the month of February, we're going to be dealing with aspects of the earthly ministry of Jesus and what it means to follow him for us. And so I think you're going to be blessed uh, by these uh, series of lessons that are very, very practical and very important for us as believers. And so following Jesus is the uh, key for the next four lessons. The lesson focus today we find in Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4 and the, uh, the focus verse is verse 1. And the scripture says this. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Led by the Spirit, that is the Holy Spirit, into the wilderness. The lesson and big idea is this. I will, I will be led by the Spirit and surrender to God's will on my life. How marvelous that is. That's a wonderful focus uh, uh, idea. I will be led by the Spirit and surrender to God's call on my life. And the truth about God now, the new lessons that have a, have a set two-part sort of focus, uh, the truth about God's Word, God provides the resources necessary for believers to fulfill their calling, to fulfill the calling. So here we have uh, uh, an event that many of us are familiar with. It is the temptation of Christ uh, in uh, the wilderness after a period of fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, here we have the supernatural fasting uh, that, uh, that was done by our Savior. And uh, let's put, uh, look at this with a view towards what we can extract from the temptation and ultimately the victory that the Lord Jesus won and uh, that, that we can apply to our own lives. We, some weeks ago, uh, preached with respect to this passage, and uh, it's a... In, in, a, in a theological way, it's a it's a, a the do over. Uh, we recall all of us, I'm sure, the story of the falling of Adam and Eve in the garden. They're f falling to temptation, and here we have the devil uh, coming with the same intent that Jesus would fall. But bless the Lord, he won the victory. I'm so glad about it this morning that he won the victory, and uh, because he won the victory, we are more than conquerors, and we can be victorious as well during our seasons of temptation. All right, let's begin and let's work, work through this. I'm going to read basically Luke chapter 4. We're going to work through uh, verse 15 with respect to this. And uh, maybe I should just read, uh, read this in its entirety. Some of you may or may not know, but um, let's read it. We have this parallel passage in, in Matthew chapter 4 as well. But here we're reading Luke's version of it. I'll just read it, and then we'll come back and, and extract the points that the lesson has for today. I, I think the author did a really good job uh, with this this morning. Uh, verse 1, we've already read. Verse 2, Luke chapter 4, verse 2. Being 40 days tempted of the devil, and in those days he did eat nothing, and when they were ended, he afterward hungered. So this is a point that we understand that uh, he, he actually, during the entirety of this, uh, this 40 days, he was tempted uh, throughout, and uh, if you 
uh, have any way fasted recently, I think you can, re you can relate to what we have the scripture telling us. Uh, that uh, your, your body and our, our bodies and our flesh, uh, when we're fasting, uh, is not happy. And they, we want to eat. And so we have this temptation that's, uh, that's being tested. Uh, the Lord's being tested through the entirety of this 40 days, apparently. And so uh, naturally, he's hungry. That's what verse 2 says. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made uh, bread. Let's pack up just for, for a bit. I want to say one or two things about this. I'm going to follow the lesson commentary. We have the, the statement here at the very beginning of, 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 of this narrative that we need to recognize uh, that the Bible says that the Lord was full of the Holy Spirit and he was led by uh, the Spirit into the wilderness. He's filled with the Holy Spirit and he's led by the Spirit into the wilderness he's led by the holy spirit for for a purpose and that's for what for his testing for his testing and i think that um, we should recognize that our our being filled with the holy spirit yes i've got the holy ghost we will say that i've got the holy spirit that that our being filled with the holy spirit does not exempt us from temptation and testing that even being fully filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, uh, that there are temptations that are going to come in our lives. That's going to happen. It's going to happen. It doesn't matter whether you got saved uh, this past week or whether you got saved 40 years ago. It's still the case that all of us are going to deal with temptation. And Jesus knew this. In fact, this inevitability about temptation. We, we recall the Lord's Prayer. That we, that we recite so often uh, where he gets down to verse 13. He says, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. W what, is it, what does this help us to see? Uh, that it's going to happen, but that we as God's children, that we have the ability and the privilege of praying and asking the Lord to deliver us from certain things. There are certain tests. I've always believed the word of the Lord teaches us that there are certain testings or temptations that we have that we don't have to have if we would ask the Lord to deliver us from those things. And so that's a prayer for us. Lord, deliver me from any of those things that I don't have to have, those things that I need to have, and you're going to help me to go through them, then amen. But I don't want any unnecessary testing, and unnecessary temptation that uh, would come upon me. All right, and so it is a reality. A temptation and testing is a, is a reality in the life of every believer, every child of God. Don't think that anyone is exempt. Don't <laughs> look at anybody like they're on some side of a mountaintop that somehow that they are free of it. Every believer has the reality of, of testing. Holy Spirit filled people. Hallelujah. Um, and so it is true now. It was true back in the Old Testament days. It was true for the children of Israel in the wilderness that that they were tested and it wasn't the internet and it wasn't pornography and it wasn't drugs it wasn't alcohol it wasn't any of those things but there was a temptation to, to, to worship false gods and to be uh ungrateful and to be complaining and uh the, 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 and to be rebellious they, those were temptations that they had and of course they failed the scriptures they were overcome in the wilderness all right uh we should recognize that the lord will help us when we are in a place of temptation. The Lord will help us. I want to say this to someone that you would know that. Was, uh, someone called me this week and said, just, you know, just pray for me. I'm in a place of temptation. I want you to know that, that God is with us during those times of te testing. Uh, in fact, we have a marvelous test, uh, a marvelous text of scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, and verse 13. I'm going to read the NIV version, but it says this. But when you are tempted, he will provide a way out so that you can endure it. And that's the, that's the NIV. But the old King James says that God is faithful. He will not endure you to be tested above that that you're able. He will not suffer you or allow you to be tested above that which you're able. That there is with the way of temptation, uh, with the temptation, a way of escape that we may be able to bear it. So some folks have sort of, sort of made their own paraphrase on it. And they say, God won't put no more in you than you can bear. That's not, that's not what the scripture says exactly. But 
it sort of gets at the sentiment of what the scripture is telling us here that when when we are tested that god has allowed there to be a an off-ramp i think the author uses that terminology i like that there's an off-ramp there's a way of escape uh, that that we have whatever you're dealing with brother this this morning uh, whatever you're dealing with in life that is a temptation to you i want you to know that the lord has made a way that you are able to be removed from that so that you don't fail god is always faithful he says he's faithful to do that make sure that you take the exit ramp that god provides for you that uh, you don't fail and fall uh to the temptation that is before you all right and so that he can give us a place where uh, we have wisdom that we don't place ourselves in compromising situations and with compromising people uh that with with things that are that may have at one point been strongholds in our lives all these things god says i'll make a way of escape thank you jesus that you'll be able to bear it. All right. And so we look at the Lord. Let's go back to Luke chapter 4. Let's pick it up at verse 4. And look at what we have here unfolding. We read verse 3. The devil said, you know, if you're the son of God, make these stones bread. Verse 4. And Jesus answered him saying, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every what every word of god all right and then we have these this escalating a series of temptations that uh the, the devil presents first one is make these stones uh, into bread you're hungry go ahead and do that and then verse four and the devil taking him up in the high mountain showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time and the devil said unto him all this power will i give thee and the glory of them for that is delivered unto me and to whomsoever i will give it if thou therefore wilt worship me all shall be thine. Well, fall down and worship me is what the devil says. And he's still, he's still compelling people, commanding them and enticing them to fall down and to worship him. But Jesus did what? Verse 8, Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt what? Worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thou serve. All right. Then we have the last temptation, which we begin in verse 9. And he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. And verse 12, the final response of Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And in verse 13, And when the devil had into all the temptations, he departed from him for a season. What do we have here in this exchange and this uh, escalating temptation scenario that we have the Lord Jesus in? And this is a real event. This is a real temptation. It wasn't something that was just made up. It wasn't something that was fake. It was an absolute temptation presented to him. I understand this is not a lesson specifically, but temptation in and of itself is not sin. It is the yielding to temptation that is sin. I want someone to, to recognize that. Don't allow the devil to tell you that, well, because I was tempted to do wrong or tempted to have wrong thoughts, that, that, that's, that's sin. All humanity, all saints, all people are going to be tempted, but it is the yielding to temptation that is the sin. What do we have Jesus doing here with respect to the temptations? And here's where we get the lesson and where we can get the victory as well. He responded to temptation with Scripture, with the word of the Lord. Here the devil is attempting to derail the, 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 the ministry of Jesus before it even begins to get started. Uh, so, so he's on a mission to try to destroy the plan of the Lord. This is what the devil is doing. But Jesus went out of his way and he won the victory he won the victory not by doing miracles or calling down angels or doing anything in a supernatural way in that sense. He won the victory by doing what? By quoting the word of God. And the word of God has power. Always remember that. We always have to recognize that the word of God has power. It has power beyond our words and our thoughts and the people and the situation that we're dealing with. I don't know if you've had this experience as child of God where you're dealing with something in life, a problem, a situation, a person, or whatever it might be, but the Lord gives you something from his word, 
And there is a calming and there is a peace that comes when God gives you his word that to apply to a situation. And I'm telling you that nothing else is like it and nothing else will work like it. The word of God works. And so Jesus uses the word of God. He uses the scripture here. Know this too. Uh, if we look at what happened, that Satan knew a little scripture too. Yes, he did. Satan's been around for a long time. And he's had uh, some familiarity with the work of God and the words of God. And he tried to use them to, uh, to bring Jesus to a place of defeat. So straighten, understand this, that, uh, that the devil knows how to use a little word and try to use some spiritual intrigue to bring about victory. In fact, uh, Peter warns us about that. First Peter, uh, that, that, uh, sorry, uh, Paul warns in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, he says this, Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. In other words, the devil doesn't come in a way that's ugly. It doesn't come in a way that appears to be erroneous. He comes in a way that appears to be truthful and that appears to be really enlightenment. Lord help us. He disguises himself as an angel of light, but he's the devil. All right. So he's a master of deception and we have to have spiritual discernment and God's able to give us discernment with respect to what is true and what is not true. God gives us that power in the, in the, in the working of his Holy Spirit uh, in us. So notice here that he presented a temptation. And when the Lord re rebu rebuked or rebuffed that temptation with the word of the Lord, Satan didn't just give up and go home. He continued his onslaught of temptation. What am I saying here? What, what, what do we gather from this? Don't think that just because you won the victory today that the devil may not be back tomorrow with a new temptation. As, as long as there's breath in this body, as long as we're active and we're living, as long as we're sir, seechy, uh, searching, uh, searching to, to fulfill the will of the Lord, the devil is going to come and he's going to continue to come. Yes, he's going to continue to come. He doesn't he did give up right away. And so the Lord didn't give them to this hunger. Tried another approach for it, right? Power and glory. Uh, he was trying to give him power and glory. The devil says, I'll give that to you. Uh, but you, you, and you won't even have to go to the cross. You won't get some glory and there won't be any suffering in it. Hmm. How about that? Uh, the devil gives uh, folks a shortcut. I'll bring you to a place of prominence. I'll give you to a place of glory. And you can shortcut all that suffering that's part of the Christian walk. I haven't got to this yet, but I'm going to at a certain point very soon, I guess. We're going to talk and preach about the, uh, the power of suffering. It's something that's not popular, but yet God's word teaches it's very true that there's a place of suffering that the child of God has to deal with. All right. And then finally, he says, if you're the son of God, uh, go ahead and throw yourself down. And then the Lord again quotes scripture. So understand this, that with each response to Satan, the Lord Jesus quoted from scripture. The first response with respect to make these stones uh, uh, into bread, he quoted from Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 3. Listen to this. It is written, the man shall not live by bread alone by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. That's he's quoted from Deuteronomy chapter 8. And we, with respect to the kingdoms of this world, he quoted, what, he quoted from Deuteronomy chapter 6 and 13 and Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 20. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God, him only shalt thou serve, and shall give him shalt thou cleave and swear by his name. Uh, so we have that. And then finally, the final temptation, the Lord quoted from Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 16. You shall not tempt the Lord your God. How, how did this happen? From all we know and believe to be the case, the Lord Jesus wasn't, wasn't there reading from the scroll or a Bible, as we would say. He didn't have his, uh, his, his iPad that whip out a few scriptures. He, uh, I'll be facetious here a little bit. What am I saying? That he had the word of God in his heart and in his mind. And there is a lesson for us that there is an important place for every believer to ask God to help us to hide his word in our hearts. And the way we do that, that's sort of a, a flowery way of saying it. But listen, what, what does it really mean? That there must be some Bible memorization. That there's got to be some scriptures that we've put in our heart and our mind. And we can quote those scriptures whether we have the Bible, the physical Bible open or not. We have hid his word within us. And I'm encouraging someone to do this. Perhaps you're saying, well, pastor, 
you know, I'm not as young as I used to be. Uh, and, uh, you know, my mind is not all what it used. Maybe you're saying that, maybe you're not saying that. But I want to tell you this. If, if we apply ourselves to it, God will help us. Yeah, if you, could just, if you can just remember one verse a week. How about that? You don't have to say, I'm going to remember a new verse every day. But if you could just remember one word, one, one verse every week, at the end of the year, you've got, what, 52 new verses that you've gotten that will help continue to build your arsenal to fight the devil. And we're going to need his word to help us to fight the devil. All right. And so we've got to hide the word in our heart. If we can use it to fight the devil, to fight the devil. God knows that we're in a, we're in a fight. The book of Hebrews tells us that we have a great high priest that he is that he is touched with the feelings of our infirmities that he knows how we feel and what we feel god is like that he knows where we are he knows our frame the bible says and he knows that we're just dust he he, he he understands and not only does he understand but he's with us during the times of testing all right and so he's with us thy word have i hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. That's Psalm chapter 119 and verse 11. All right. And so the New Testament also speaks of the word of God and uh, the power of it. Hebrews chapter 4, he says that the word of God is quick. That means it's alive. That's all that means. This is uh, quick. It's alive and it's, it's powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. The word of God can get right down to where we are. I know you had the experience I have as well where someone is preaching the word of the Lord particularly or sometimes maybe even teaching it where it looks like that person has uh, the, the person that's preaching the word of God. It looks like they've been reading your notes or it must be sitting in your house watching what's going on because the word of God what is alive and it's powerful and it's sharp and it gets right down to where we are it cuts right through a whole bunch of stuff. Scripture is dividing the bone and the marrow. It gets right to where we are. And shows us our condition and shows us our circumstance. The word of God does that. But we have to hide it in our heart. Hide it in our heart. God will help you. I want to tell you this. Don't feel over in intimidated or afraid. Just ask the Lord to begin to show you how to read his word and how to hide it, how to memorize it, how to meditate on it. And God will do that. That is a prayer request that I can tell you it pleases God and he will help you. He will help it. All right. Let's look further, still in Luke chapter 4, and uh, the very conclusion of the, of the narrative that we're dealing with, at the end of the final temptation about uh, the, uh, throwing your angels, throwing himself down, angels will bear him up, verse 12 says this, and, the, and Jesus answered and said unto him, it is said, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Verse 13 in the, in the Bible says this, and when the devil had ended all what the temptation, he what? Departed him for a season. The part of him for a season. Uh, that's also in the, in the Matthew version as well. The devil left, left for a season. When, when we're on this earth, when we get to the place of victory over, over, over temptation, uh, and we can, sort of, we can sort of breathe a sigh of relief, say, Lord, I thank you for the victory. I bless you that you have, have given me a place where I was an overcomer. But understand that uh, until the devil is finally bound up and cast into the lake of fire, that he, he's going to come back sooner or later. Yes, sooner or later he's going to come back. He may leave you for a season, and, uh, you know, I don't know what the, how long the season is a day or it could be a year, but he's going to come back at some point in the future. All right, and then what we have when uh, the, the Lord's uh, won the victory here, if we, were, if we were to continue reading in Luke chapter 4, you'll, you'll find that this victory that he won in this private place, that's a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a point about this that's not often spoken of, but it's true. This was a place of private temptation. No one else was around to see what was going on. It was just the Lord Jesus Christ and the devil tempting him. It was a place of private temptation, but he won the victory. And when he won the victory, he then was placed in a position of public prominence. It was the real launching of his earthly ministry. But he, he, before he got to the place of prominence and open where everybody knew his name, there was a place of private humility and private obedience to the Father. And so that's a point, I think, for all of us to recognize that there is a place of testing where it's going to be you and the devil. And, for, and, of course, we have the Lord helping us. People are not going to be around, but God is around. And so we, we were, able to win, were able to win the victory, and God's able to help us go forward. 
And so when he did that, he was then propelled into his purpose. We read, in fact, Luke, um, we're still in Luke chapter 4. Look at verse 14. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. All right. So he was led in the wilderness. Now the Spirit is leading him back into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him throughout all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogues being glorified of all. Look at this. God is, 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 is keeping his word that, that when we humble ourselves before him, then he does what? Then he exalts us in due time. And so here we have the Lord Jesus exalted and moving to fulfill the mission and purpose that God has ordained for him. This is true for us as well, that we're not just being tempted for just for the heck of it and just for God just to see what's going to happen, that there's a place where in, in our testing that the Lord is preparing us for things in our future. And sometimes I believe that we don't get to that place of our full mission being accomplished is because we don't get to the place and we have not won the victory in our private times of temptation. But once we get there, then God is able to take us to the next level, if I can use a cliche, the next level of victory, the next level of success in our terms of our calling and our purpose in life. All right. And so we have Jesus as our example. We have him winning the victory in the overall scheme that gives us and make it where he is the perfect sacrifice. We thank God for that. We thank God for him that because he was sinless without sin. He who knew no sin became sin that we might be the righteous of God in Christ Jesus. We have that. But we also have the example of the Lord Jesus Christ. We want to emulate him that he is the one that he is the, the perfect man that we mark the perfect man. And that's Jesus Christ. And so when we're led into our place of wilderness, and that does happen, somebody may be in a place of wilderness right now, but I want you to know that God's not going to leave you there. You're not there forever, that there's a place of victory where you come out of the wilderness. And don't become despondent and despairing uh, with respect to that wilderness that you may be in. God's going to bring you out, but be obedient to him while you're there in the wilderness. Don't fail or fall to temptation while you're in the wilderness and god's then going to take you to a place of deliverance and a place of complete victory come on let's bless the lord this morning father we thank you we thank you for this word that we have received and the example that we have written as we look at the life of our savior where he was propelled into his purpose after he won the victory in private temptation god i pray that even now we who are dealing with the temptations of the lives that we're living that you'll help us follow the example of the Lord Jesus Christ, that we will use the word of God as a sword, that we'll use your word, Lord, and that we'll swing this sword and that will not be deceived by the tricks and the deceptions of the enemy. And then in our place of, of private temptation, as we won the victory, God, then you'll use us for your glory in a public place. And we thank you, honor you, and give you all the glory. We ask all this in Jesus' name, and we say amen and amen. And amen. God bless you. I'm really blessed by this lesson. I hope you are as well. I want you to continue listening and continue being part of this. Share this with someone else. Tell someone to tune in to the adult Sunday school class in here at Grace New Covenant Church. Uh, you can obviously see it now Sundays at 9 o'clock. But also, uh, you can tune in and thank God through technology. It's also on the YouTube. It's on YouTube, the Grace New Covenant Church channel. You go to YouTube, type in Grace New Covenant Church, and then you'll see all the lessons for Sunday school and, and Bible class and the sermons as well. And you can tell someone, I want you to watch this particular Sunday lesson. I want you to listen to this particular lesson or whatever it may be, and God will help them. All right, God bless you. 1030, we come together virtually today. Uh, the Lord has a word for us. Uh, we're looking at our destiny. I'm very excited. God's going to help us. So tune in today at 1030, and we're going to understand more about the destiny that God has us in as part of our new life. God bless you. Amen.